Alright guys, how's it back again today? Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And welcome back to Valorant News with Masters Copenhagen starting at least the playoffs in just a couple of days time. Riot seems to be wading through all the partnership applications for next season's pseudo franchise league as some people are referring to it as. Apparently many organisations have already received the rejection but have not told their players for whatever reason that maybe restricting their players possibilities to even go to a franchise team for next season. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy subscribe if you are new as always i would greatly appreciate it really helps the channel thank you very much indeed for doing that one first of all this is pretty funny from fbx artist you got a fan says right here head on this please ban fracture versus drx please he says no and then you go sorry for not trusting you but always supporting fbx they play fanatic in a couple of days time that's going to be of course a massive game one of the kickoff games for the friday where everything begins again now definitely wanted to mention this because a few weeks ago you guys may well remember we looked at the coaching bug here in valorant and the potential implications it may well have. So um, this has obviously been a thing in Counter-Strike. There was a massive scandal about this actually, right? A lot of coaches using a similar exploit to get free information in many games for many years. Now this is something that might be possible to exploit by coaches online. We talked about the fact that there's no replay viewer in Valorant. So if coaches are doing this, you really can't even know if they're doing it right. Now the idea would be that there's kind of um, a referee in the voice comms of every single team in online games, at least for official games. So therefore the coach couldn't really refer to them any information if he was finding information out through situations like this without the referee like knowing about it right but there might be ways to get around that if possible right and just seeing what we have in Counter-Strike before you can't really rule out the possibility that coaches are exploiting this now Riot said I think that they fixed this a few weeks ago they were aware of the bug they said they fixed it but apparently there's a kind of new version going on right here you guys can see on the mini map here on the left hand side this kind of red dot which is moving around the map and that this seems to be for whatever reason in certain situations like coaches can see this now then maybe they can figure out ways that they can actually force this to happen or whether it's sometimes it just happens randomly but yes apparently this coach spectator bug still exists obviously a big deal at whatever right did to fix it hasn't fixed it entirely and uh, yeah obviously something they've really got to think about because in some of these online tournaments that maybe aren't quite as well policed there could be this happening honestly all the time in Valorant right now now I want to talk about paper x they made it all the way to the winners finals already they guaranteed top three in the tournament the winner of their series against optic will get to the grand finals guaranteed and the way they're playing right now obviously you're going to have a really hard time trying to stop them right because the way these guys play is very fun indeed to watch of course and obviously you're going to be sitting there thinking well damn how do we counter strike these guys is there any way to even do that do we fight aggression with aggression or are they just going to bowl us over with, with just raw power as paper X do tend to bring to these games now good news for paper X is that forsaken has now tested negatives he i believe was the first player to test positive then i think jing also was testing positive but great news that he's negative because that may well mean that uh, the full team can play on stage in front of the crowds when it comes to the actual event in a couple of days time so that's obviously good news and of course good that they're feeling better as well because like the fact that they weren't even at 100% capacity it seems and they still won the series in the fashion that they did against the likes of Fnatic was it was honestly incredibly impressive right so for sake of negative now so that's good news wonder what's going to happen with Jing I think that's the kind of other rumor that he was the one that was also positive so if that's the case then hopefully he's negative as well in a couple of days time he can play in front of the crowds and uh, we get the event as we would like to see it not with one player in like an isolation remind the stage or something strange like that now like Copenhagen of course is coming very soon indeed Bodork is out there and he's been giving kind of what he's heard about the franchise system for next year and how it's already affecting certain teams first of all he says that for Amir the first team is already locked in so one team has been effectively decided by Riot that okay this organization is going to be part of the franchise size if you guys aren't familiar with this there's going to be three leagues around the world next season three premier leagues apparently only with 10 teams although it might well be 12 but 10 I believe is the current rumour. So 10 effectively organisations are going to get chosen next year to partner up with Riot. I think Riot even gives them a stipend to pay certain expenses but effectively in return the organisations give their long term commitment and it's effectively a franchise style North American-esque league an ecosystem where the, those teams can't get relegated. Those are the only organisations that can be part of the premier level events kind of what you see in a lot of North American sports and that Riot has done for example in League of Legends and other esports over what today Call of Duty League have done over the last few years as well. This is slightly different in terms of how they're actually doing it right with the partnership rather than the franchising so the teams don't have to pay 10 million dollars or whatever to buy into the league but it's effectively a similar idea in terms of the implications it has for the scene. Many organizations that currently are involved on a pretty decent level will no longer be able to be involved. So of course and also 10 organizations, 12 organizations per region is a very low number compared to the ones we currently have. So already we've seen at Luminosity Gaming, Shopify Rebellion, like they've been rejected and they've gone. I think 
Saw Gaming as well even said that they're not going to be doing Valorant anymore just because their partnership isn't going to get approved. And many organizations probably have already been in a similar boat where their partnerships are starting to get rejected. Riot are going through them, trying to narrow down, okay, do we want this team? Do we want this team? Because it's not just the success of the organization, but it's also the success of them from like a business perspective. What can they do in the future? What resources do they have? How can they invest into maybe the game changer side? Do they bring in sponsors and eyes? And these type of questions as well. Like one of the reasons why maybe Sentinels brought Shroud onto their team. And SK Gaming said that they've got some sort of sponsorship issue. So they're not going to be pursuing their kind of franchise application. And that's the thing. If you don't get the franchise application this time, when's the, when's the time that Riot are going to expand these leagues, right? Is it going to go from 10 to 12 next year? Is it going to go from 10 to 16 in two years time? Like these organizations might just have to sit there waiting. And that's the scary thing for a lot of these orgs and a lot of the players is that the orgs have to decide, okay, do we just wait in the tier two scene on the sidelines for like two seasons to try and hope that we can buy in or like get in the league in a couple of years time? And what does that mean for the players, right? Because, oh, okay, am I going to get dropped if my team doesn't get through? Am I going to be able to join a franchise team and actually play in this league? Or is my career effectively going to be over playing Mickey Mouse tournaments for the rest of my life? Now, as Bodog apparently says, and this was a key fear actually that was being had about a lot of these organizations, that a lot of organizations, a lot of them, which seems to be like at least like five or six or something, are keeping them being eliminated from franchising secret from their rosters. Great way to screw up their players' chance of getting into franchising by giving them less time to look for offers. So this is an interesting situation. It's tough to say why the organizations would do this because some orgs have come out and said, yes, we didn't get accepted. But others are obviously being told this and yet aren't telling their players. Maybe they feel like they can go back to it and say, no, I actually, I disagree with your rejection. We want to do it this way. Maybe feel like they're not going to say it yet. But the idea that they're not going to tell their players this, and maybe they just don't want it to be a big deal. Maybe they feel like it's kind of embarrassing, right? If you're a big organization that got rejected, like, um, I mean, yeah, obviously it's pretty tough to, to say that to the timeline, I suppose. And also from your player's perspective, that's pretty tough for them. But obviously it's better to be honest and transparent up front to tell your players, yes, you're not going to get a franchise spot next year because Riot rejected our application. Therefore, like, you know, look for other offers elsewhere effectively because you're going to be a free agent. But I'm sure the organizations have a few weeks to, well, I'm sure from their perspective, they feel like they want to take their time to figure out what they're going to do. What are they going to do with their players? Like, what are the buyouts going to be if other organizations do want to pick them up? It's a very intense situation this offseason is going to be after champions, especially when these rosters have to figure this out. Now, Bodo apparently has actually informed a lot of these players. And I'm guessing like maybe these are European teams or APAC teams that are struggling with this, but I wouldn't really rule it out for being from a North American perspective as well. Even Vanity says here from Cloud9, another date in the esports office, nothing new he says. So probably Cloud9 are going to get a spot. That would be very difficult to imagine. That's not going to be the case. But many of these organizations on the screen right now, that is not going to be the case for, right? So here we go. This is, a, I'll just try and make it sure it's fully on screen. This is what's going to happen in many of the different regions. This is NA, EMEA, Brazil, Japan. And even if we scroll down, we get Korea, Latin America, Asia Pacific, and Oceania, right? So only like 30 of all of these teams are actually going to get a spot next season in franchising. Let's look at North America, for example. So some of these teams, of course, have been eliminated. And I think that's what Bodog says actually here, that are under organizations who are eliminated. So apparently maybe like a lot of these organizations are the ones that are already not, let's say, at the last chance qualify and have no chance to do anything next year. But even Shopify Rebellion, they got told that they've been rejected. They picked up the LG team. So they're going to be struggling with it. So maybe other organizations are in a similar boat. NRG, right? Who knows, right? Because let's say you just look at North America, for example. And also like Amir, like he also mentioned the fact that one of these teams has been accepted. Is it maybe a G2? That might be likely. Is it a Team Liquid? Like probably some of these teams will get in. But in North America, they've also got to think that there's only maybe six or seven North American spots because they've got to give some to Brazil, Loud, for example, NIP, right? Who knows? Also in, uh, also in Latin America, right? Crew Esports, Leviathan. They've got to figure what they do down there. So probably only like seven spots in North America, which means, okay, you get Optic, you get Cloud9, you get 100 Thieves, you get Sentinels. That's four already. And then you've only got, you know, relatively limited spots. Okay, maybe TSM come in as a fifth. Then you've got to choose between, okay, Exet, The Guard, NRG, like Evil Geniuses, Version 1, Ghost Gaming Knights, all teams that are in this kind of ballpark. That maybe teams like Version 1, Ghost Gaming, have already been rejected and aren't telling their players yet. Evil Geniuses may be in a similar boat. NRG as well. Even though I would say NRG will get it, I would say that FaZe are less likely. Even The Guard as well, they have a lot of resources, but like they might not get in. And then FaZe are going public, so maybe that's going to be a positive in their favor. I don't really know. It's a bit of a mess, but possibly some of these organizations I've just mentioned have been told that they're not getting in, just like Shopify Rebellion have, but yet haven't yet informed their players. So we'll see how this one develops over the coming weeks. Wanted to mention Sentinels, though, because that's an organization they're almost certainly going to get into franchising next year. As Elsa says, one hour to take this picture down. I thought, honestly, thought it was a pretty good one. But yeah, this was crazy as well. Worlds collide, right? So the boot camp has officially begun in Texas, I'm pretty sure, for the Sentinels. Fellas, we've got, uh, you know, Mike Tyson, actually, right here, as Cloud9 points out. Mike 
Mike Tyson. Not too bad. Pretty funny, to be honest. But I mean, yeah, what, what a duo this is going to be. Will it work out for them? I guess that's another question mark. They've been doing some bonding right here over the pool table as well. So this is pretty funny, but you know, good to see from Centaurs. And this is, is another example of really going to show to Riot during a situation like this that they mean business, right? They're here hiring out a house, hiring out a team house to get a, a ready for the last chance qualifier. Centaurs are just doing everything they need to do to prove 100% to Riot that, okay, yeah, they are an organization to get involved in fragging next year. I'm sure they will be getting in as well. And this was the other thing I was meaning to mention actually a little bit earlier, but the fact that Exit announced yesterday they have actually raised another $15 million in Series A funding, which is also rather a big deal and maybe rather well times for Riot to see this and think, okay, Exit mean business here. They might be an organization we want to get involved in as well next season. Pretty big org as well. So I don't know, man. They're going to have to have some serious questions on their hands. It might well be a few months until everything is officially confirmed here, but we're expecting around about Champions time for the kind of all the organizations to be confirmed in all the regions, which means the rejected ones will be finding out very shortly indeed. A couple of things to finish out with here. I thought this is kind of incredible, actually. The fact that the Jet and Sova pick rate, respectively, down to 21 and 23%, the lowest ever this has been in Valorant history, actually. And just to look at this going into the playoffs, these are the best rated players, the top 10 rated players. Artist, Mind Freak, Marv, Forsaken, Jing, a lot of Paper X guys, as expected. Fnatic are all here. Like, I mean, yeah, very limited teams, actually, are on this list. And I'm one FPX man right at the top of it on the chamber, as you might well expect right now. And yeah, I don't know if you guys agree with this tweet as well. Valorant just hasn't been the same since Split got removed from the game, baby. Very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new as always. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.